We're talking about a, a very common story tonight. It's called the prodigal son. Uh, has ever everyone ever you know uh, now prodigal? That's an old old saying. That's from the 1600s, uh, and that means just lost son. Now, many times you see that the singular, the, the prodigal or the lost son. Has anyone ever heard the story? Just raise your hand if you've heard it. Now, I'm going to ask you to explain it to them and say, have you heard it, heard of it? Now, today we're going to uh, break it down in, in a little different way, okay? Uh, I have a lot to cover, a lot of ground to cover in a very little bit of time, okay? So, uh, I think that this is a, a popular story. We're going to, uh, I'm going to break it down in, you know, like, like in substance and, and tell you what it means in context. But then I'm going to uh, tell you, I think Jesus is trying to communicate three things to us out of this text. And if you give it a chance, I think that you'll, you know, it'll bless you and challenge you. All right, so I want to pray, Father, we thank you for who you are. Lord, I pray that you, uh, as I decrease and you may increase. Meet us where we are. Meet us here. Lord, be with us and have your way in Christ's name. Uh, amen. Amen. Hey, guys, uh, one more thing. My men, hey, uh, we, we had our first meeting for the men who are just trying to uh, learn and know Jesus. Uh, we uh, and just trying to like like develop, develop our men. We, we we met this past Saturday. It was good times. Uh, we're meeting in on the thirtieth, the thirtieth of this month. That Saturday at ten a.m. at the lower level of Center. You'll hear more on our Instagram. All right. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke, Luke fifteen. Uh, uh, I, and if you don't, we we got it up here. Okay. Uh, uh, most folks end up re always end up having like the King James version for some reason, which is really hard to understand. But I'm actually going to read the first two verses, one and two, just to make sure that we're clear. It says that uh, now the tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes, and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. I love how Jesus, now this is about Jesus, Jesus talking. I love the fact that Jesus was eating with sinners. And, and, and he was eating with, uh, with people that the religious folks said, don't touch them. I love how Jesus always pushes against the, 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 uh, the, the cultural norms. But right here, um, this is one of the stories he was telling. He said, to, to illustrate the point further, Jesus said, I told him this story, a man had two sons. The, the, son young, uh, the, son, the younger son told his father, I want my, I want my share of your estate uh, now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money on wild living. <laughs> I like that. He was, he was doing his, all his money on what, y'all? What kind of living? Wow. Wild living. And about, that, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he uh, began to starve. He was ready a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent, sent him out to the fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pod he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, so no one, but no one gave him anything. Then he finally came to his senses, and he said to himself, at home, even the higher servants have enough food to uh, spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both, uh, against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me in as a higher servant. So he returned home and his father, uh, to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. And his, and his son said, uh, said to him, uh, father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to call your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe uh, in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for his, uh, this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what's going on? Your, uh, <laughs> your brother is back, he was told. And your father has killed the fatty calf that we're celebrating because of safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. The father came out and begged him, but he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once uh, refused to do anything, a single thing you told me. And in all that time, you never gave me, uh, me even one young goat for a feast in my friends. Yet when, uh, when this son of yours, <laughs> I like how he said when this son of yours, came back from squandering your money and pro on prostitutes, uh, you celebrated by killing the fat calf. His father said to him, look here, son. You, uh, you have always saved by me, and everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has to come back to life. He was lost, but now he's found. 
A lot going on there, right? There's it's essentially two acts right here going on. We have act one. We have the first situation where we had this younger brother who came uh, uh, to his father and said that, uh, first I love, look how Jesus, like this is Jesus talking, y'all. And in verse 11, he said the man had how many sons? He says two sons. So he's actually telling you a story about two people. Most times we focus on one. But he's actually telling you about two. And, and in this story, there's two folks that you and I should be, is a case study, uh, so, so to speak, of two people who are actually in relationship with, with, with the father and is showing you their motives about why they want to be in relationship with the father. And actually it helps describe you and I in this life. And he said, so the first son he's talking about, he said the younger son, we'll call him uh, Lil Youngin, okay? But we see Lil Young, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> we see Lil Youngin over here, living, uh, living his wild life, and he says, now, in verse 12 he says, the younger son told his father, I want you to share your estate uh, now before you die. So his father agreed to get divided. So, so look, at, look at this, just be clear, the Bible was written for us, but it wasn't written to us. So what I mean by this is that the Bible, the Bible was written to a specific group at a specific time in history, and those people would have read it and understand it, understood it in a very specific way. Just like, you know, just like if we're looking at Shakespeare, it's written to, it's for, it's for everybody, but those people who read it at that time when Shakespeare came out, they would have understood it in, a, in, a, in one way or another, right? So in order for us to fully understand the Bible and, and how it's written, we got to understand that the audience who would have read it the first time. So right here, Jesus is talking to some folks who were Mediterranean, some, old, some folks from 2,000 years ago, and they are listening to this older Mediterranean man you know, telling a story about how this young son came to him and said, hey, daddy, I want you to give me half your estate. No, no, better yet, give me what's mine. Now, we all know how, how estates work, you know, if, you, if, if your parents have money to give you, you know, uh, while your parents are still living, do you have, uh, you know, when they put you in your will, you know, and they say, hey, I'm gonna give Darnell 40% of my, my, my estate when, upon what, my what? When you what, when the parent does what? When they die. So this is what this dude is coming up. He's, he's, he essentially is coming to the father and says, look, I want you to die. Oh. Y'all don't see it? He says, he says, look, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So essentially, essentially, I want you to die first. Because I, I don't really want you, I want your stuff. Y'all see it? And so the five, so the, the original hearers were saying. We heard this, we're like, well, yeah, well, he should, the, the, the father need to be, like, monkey stump this dude. <laughs> like, like, we should monkey stump him because if you, you know, that's the most disrespectful thing you can do to, to go to your parents and say, I wish he was dead so I can get mine. If, if, you, if we know this, if it's a black family, what's going to happen? You're going to get, you're gonna get, you're gonna get dog walked, right? <laughs> You go to the extension cord, you know, or the broom, or the, I mean, y'all generation, y'all about to get spoons, right? You know, we're sitting in the corner. Anyway, <laughs> y'all parents like this, I'm going to sit in the corner. Anyway, so, <laughs> so what was funny right here is this, is that, is that the younger son said, I wish you would die, and then it was even more shocking that the father agreed to do it. His love was so deep that he said, here, I'm going to divide my wealth between my sons. Now, mind you, the older son should get two-thirds of everything. The younger son should only get a third of everything. So the older son had a big lion's share. And so in order for the father to, to, to like, uh, 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 give him, give the son what he wanted, he had to sell off his land. Tell him to decent amount of his land. It says this in verse 13, y'all. This is crazy. This is a really, really crazy. So, at this point, the father is giving the son all he wanted. 13 says, a few days later, the younger son packed all his belongings and moved out to this land. He wasted all his money on wild living. He was wild. Then his money ran out. A great famine over the land, and y'all, look, this younger dude was struggling to eat. He was 
struggling because just like inflation happened to us right now, inflation happened at that point. But inflation was self-induced because he actually just he blew it all. On, if y'all saw it later on, he's on prostitutes. He was just trying to get have a good time. Use your imagination. Now the original hearers are sucking air at this point. And they're like, they're, 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 they're grown, they're, they're like, what in the world? They're like, what kind of kid is this? That kid should, should be killed. That kid should be kicked out. But yet, Jesus said something about this father that, that, that no one else would have uh, understood at that time. He says this, is that, um, now, the younger son, in verse 16, it says that the young man became so hungry, he was feeding uh, from the pods of the, uh, the pig, from the pigs. He's, Feeding from the pig slop, essentially. And, and it says, when he came to his senses, he says, uh, he says uh, you know, uh, verse 17, he says, at home, even the higher servants uh, have enough food to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go to my father uh, and say, Father, I have sinned, you know, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Guess what this dude did? He started developing a presentation to share with his father, to say, here, I'm going to give you a 10 point presentation why you should. Why, why you should you actually, you actually accept me back as my, as my, uh, as your son. But yet, I'm even, I'll even hire myself out it as your higher hand so that I can pay restitution. Because all the money that you gave me, the only way you can accept me back in, in your family is if I pay back what, what, what you gave me. That makes sense, right? Logical. But what happened next blew everyone's mind. Verse 19, it says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me as a higher servant. So when he returned to his father, he says, Father, I have sinned against you, uh, both, both you uh, and heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to the servant, oh, no, no, right here, verse 20. He says, so he returned home to his father, and while he was still away off, his father saw him come and filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Now everyone is, is by the riot. They, they said, what kind of father would do this? to a son that, that didn't deserve that. The, the son deserved death, but yet this father is actually running to him. Old men, look at this. Men don't run. Especially Middle, Middle Eastern men who are, who are businessmen, who had vast wealth. Women ran, children ran, but men didn't run. On top of that, the fact this is that the, it says that while he was a long way off, his father saw him coming. That means his father was, guess what he was doing? He was looking for him. He had a father who was looking for him, even though he was run, even though he didn't deserve it. He deserved death. He deserved uh, a damnation. He deserved to be murdered. And yet the father was sitting there watching for him over the horizon saying, I'm looking for my son. I'm praying for his return. And yet... This younger son came and said, hey, you know, he came for a rehearsal of his speech, and then when his father came, uh, you know, when he was a long way off, his father saw him, uh, saw him coming, filled with him love and compassion, he ran to his son. Wow, he embraced him and kissed him. That is dope. I love how the father never gave him what he deserved. Because the father in verse 22 said, he said, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Y'all, can I ask y'all where that robe come from? Where that ring come from? Where the sandals come from? Where do you think it came from? The father. The father gave up his own wealth and of his own possessions just to clothe his son who has squandered everything. That's a crazy love. That's, some, that's what you call crazy love. Then, then, you know, so he throw in a party. Now we're going to go to the second son. Now the second son is, is who we're dealing with uh, because it's two sons. The first one we understand. The second one is a little weird. Because it says, meanwhile, the older son was at the fields working, and when he returned home, he heard music and dancing, and he asked the one of the what's going on? They said, it's your, your brother's back. Your father's still a fat cat. Weird. Why is this fat cat? Y'all, 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 Fat and calf, that means that, by the way, just so you all know, a fat and calf means it was a, it was a, it was a lamb that they had been stuffing, you know, and, and, and feeding and stuff like that. And you only threw, as a, it, the father had a block party. He had a block party specifically because 
People didn't eat meat that much. And so whenever someone was, was having meat, that meant something powerful, powerful, powerful was happening. Some, you know, it was a massive party. And then, and then the, the older brother said this. We, we call him uh, OG Bobby Johnson. OG Bobby Son of Johnson <laughs> said this. He said he was angry and didn't what? Did he go in? Did he go into the party? No, what did he do? He wouldn't go in. He stayed out. Why? Because his father came out and begged him. And he replied, all these years I've slaved for you. I never once refused to do a single thing you told me. And, I, and, and at the same time, um, you've never given me a, a young goat for a piece of my friend. Look, y'all, this younger brother, I mean, uh, OG, this OG brother, the OG Bobby Johnson, he was actually mad at the father. Because the father did not treat the younger son like he should have. The father actually took away from the older son's wealth just to bless the younger son. Think about it. A third of the money was gone. He gave it to the younger young kid. And then when the older kid, and then when he came and, and do this party, he, he gave him a robe, he gave him a ring, he gave him sandals. Guess who, guess who, guess who, that was coming from the father's money, but it also was coming from whose money? The older son. It was coming from his inheritance, so he was teed off. Teed off. What does that teach y'all? Teach us. I'm going to summarize this. I think it's three things that, that Jesus is redefining here for us. Because, I, you know, I think he re redefined God. I think he redefined sin. I think he actually redefined salvation. He redefined God. One. Never in the history of the world has people explained God in this way. Where you have, you know, usually when you hear God described, He's all powerful. He's all strong. He, 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 you know, he get things done, right? But never in the history of the world have we described a father who was filled with love and compassion like this. Never have we, just, never have God ever been described honestly who uh, who actually was running to a son. So what is that? Y'all remember I said that, that, that if an older man was running, he was showing more, more traits akin to females, right? Men were always defined by their strength and, 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 and by them being stoic, you know what I mean? But, but Jesus was describing the Father, he was describing God as someone who was strong, but who was generous. But even more importantly, he showed you that he was showing you that God actually had female tendencies. He had compassion and love. And the, never in the history of the world was this God described as someone who was loving, compassionate, and willing to forgive those who had hurt them. You ever had someone, you ever been in love with someone and, and they didn't love you back? You ever, had, you ever been in a relationship with someone and you're like, I love you, and they're like this, I don't even like you. Oh. <laughs> that never happened? Maybe it's just me. I'm sorry. Maybe just me. <laughs> but here's the thing. Is that that's what, the, that's what this, this, this father was experiencing. He had a son whom he loved. And the son was like, look, I don't even like you like that. I just want your stuff. It's called rejected love. And no, nothing makes us feel worse than when someone rejects the love that we have to give them. Because usually we try as soon as, we, as soon as someone rejects us, guess what we try to do? We try to like we try to dog them. We try to like, man, I ain't like you anyway. We should forget you being, you know. All right, bye, girl. You know, can I get your number? No, I, I got a boyfriend. What? Well, I ain't want you ugly anyway. You ain't never had that happen before. You ain't never seen that. Oh, I mean, again, my, my story. I'm just having fun. Do we see? So here, Jesus is telling us that we have a God who says that even in the midst of rejected love. I'm willing to love you over and above what you're what you're able to give me. Never in the world in the history of the world have we have we seen God described like this. Never in the history in the world that, that, that we saw the patriarchy is designed like this. Let's go, ooh, let's talk about the patriarchy real quick. Because this is the patriarchal structure that Jesus is describing right here. 
Can you, you know, everywhere we go, the patriarchy is back. Down with patriarchy. Ah, down with it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. But the patriarchy is only bad because there's sinful men running it. Because literally, God is a father. We struggle with that as people because the most of us don't have a father that, that we can identify with as kind, loving, generous, and, kind, and, 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 and gracious. Our definition of father typically is someone who is distant, far off, and aloof. Or tyrannical, tyrannical, he just beat us. Am I right? But the father that Jesus is describing here is not like that. Can you imagine if you had a patriarchy that was, that was defined more by compassion and generosity and love than what you think of when you think of the patriarchy, which is white supremacy? What if, what if the patriarchy is is really what we see here, defined here, with this father. Is that a bad thing? Actually, no, that's actually a place that's safe, that's good. Did I, did I go too far? No? Y'all, just so y'all know, the patriarchy within itself is not bad. It's what makes it bad is that you have humans who are bad at running it. But, but within God's economy, that's not a bad thing. God has divinely designed this place to run in a patriarchal structure where you have a father who is in charge, who is, who is, but he's a good father. Not a father who's tyrannical and mean and evil. Not one who's going to beat you when you don't give them what you want. You Come on, can you imagine having a father that you said, you know something, I don't need to run away from you, Dad, because I'm a, I did bad, but when, when, when bad stuff happened, I need to call Daddy because Daddy can understand me. What if you, if, what if you saw God like that? What if you saw God as the, the, the type of God that when, whenever your failures are there, you don't have to hide them or you don't have to cloak them, but you can come there and say, Daddy, help me. I need you. Knowing that he, and you know that he like, like this, he's going to run in and embrace you. Do you feel that way about God? Probably not. Most times you feel like, like I got to gotta have it together before I come to God. I got to get myself together. That's what you are. You're like the older brother. We'll talk about that in a second. He redefines sin at this point. First thing, he redefined God. Then the second thing, he redefined sin. Now the first brother, we get Look, you know, he's wild living. He's doing his own thing, right? Oh, not that one. <laughs> Look at this. It says that, that, that he was, um, he had wasted all his money on wild living, y'all. We know that sin is just that. Sin is just, like you just do bad stuff, whatever. That makes sense. Cool. But never in the history of the world have we realized that OG Bobby Johnson was the, was the one who was really lost. Look at this. The younger brother wasn't lost. You know why? Because sin is very seldom doing bad things. That's not sin. Sin is, sin is when you put yourself in position of God. When you're trying to earn your salvation, not based on, your, your, uh, not based on the loving grace of the Father, but based upon your good behavior. There's two ways that you are rebelling against God. Either you're, you're going to be the, like the lost younger brother who was just kind of wild living, or you're going to be the person who's going to try to be morally good, have everything together. I want to check all the boxes. You are a very religious person. You ever heard of someone uh, who was a tree hugger? You ever heard of somebody who's like a, a self-righteous person? You ever heard of self-righteousness? That means somebody who, who, who think they're right because of their own work, because of, because of things they do within themselves. They have right standing with God because of their own efforts. So what does that mean? That's someone who, who looks at their religion, you know, that's very religious people who are like his older brother, who's like, look, y'all, all all these years I've served you with God. I, I, I mean, I've served you, I've given you everything. And not once have you blessed me, not once have you gave me anything. Y'all, a, a religious person is usually always very, what, angry. Jesus is actually pushing back against religion. He said, no, 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 no. Religion 
there's two people who are lost in this story. You have the younger brother, which we all make sense, but guess what? The one who was very religious, the, very, the one who was very obedient to his father, the one who worked with him all the time, he was just lost. Because look, the father said, he can, look, the father came out to him. I love how the father is the one who get, came to both sons. Don't you know? For the one son, he ran to him. And this one, who was outside of the father's house, he begged him to come in. But who came in? The lost one. Got to go with me? The older one who was religious, who was, who was obedient, and who was, who was doing all the things he thought he had to to kind of check the boxes. He never came in. Sin is not us trying to Sin, sin is, 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 is us trying to use, use uh, good works just to get God's approval. That's another way of uh, defining sin. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? We in this world, I mean, come on, a lot of people in this room, we define sin like that too. We call it more, it's called moralistic therapeutic deism. Moralistic. I want to be moral. The more moral I am, the, the, better, the closer I feel to God. Am I all right? Y'all, when I feel like I'm not sinning, you know, when I feel like I'm not doing bad stuff, I feel that God is pleased with me. But that's not the kind of father we have. Jesus was describing that, that, that the father that, that we have is that when you do bad stuff, if you just come to him, he'll, he'll come to you. But yet, he's already, he's already waiting on you. He's already looking at you. Saying, come on in, baby. Come on in, son. You've been lost. Come to me. All you are weary and heavy laden. You don't have to have it all together. Just come to me as you are. Are you willing? Don't worry about all the stuff you've done in the past. Just come to me. Just come. Better yet, here, I'm coming to I, I'm actually, I'm actually drawing to you. I've come out to you. How do you know that God is coming out to you? Because probably because you're here right now. Maybe God is actually calling you and pulling your, your heartstrings and saying, hey, I want you. Maybe you're that younger brother who, who's literally way lost already, and you know it, but, but yet you feel like you've done too much to, to, to like, that God won't love you and bring you in, but I'm just letting you know one thing, that you can't even out God's love. I don't care how far away you are, those people are more likely to come to God than the than OG Bobby Johnson here, than the older brother. Y'all know why? Because religious people think that they are already in the house even though they're outside. Ooh. Religious people, see, I'm, I'm going to say this. When I say religious, I mean this. See, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, but religion is says that, that, that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to get to God. But the gospel says this, is that I'm going to see that God has come to me through, through Jesus Christ. And that and that in his coming in Christ, I'm going to respond to him in faith by saying, by, by realizing that I can't make myself better within myself. I need to cling on to the Savior who is Christ, who can, who, who can save me, who can love me, who, who has given me all that he, he has. Like, what kind of older... This, I love how he redefines sin and lostness. The older one was lost. Y'all, religion... Ain't gonna get you there. A relationship with Jesus Christ for one. We need a we need we need a a good older brother would have been that with that older brother. Are y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. A good older brother would have been that person who said, you know something? I'm gonna go out. And not, and not be mad at my, my little brother for squandering your money on prostitutes and celebrating for, or for killing the, the fat cat. A good older brother would have been like, I'm going to go out myself and find my younger brother. And I don't care what it costs to get him back. I'm going to pay for the money. I'm going to pay for it myself so that he may get access back into the home. What house are you? Who all in here is looking for to come back home? Don't, don't raise your hand. There's many of us who feels like we're, who are lost right now, who are outside the house. And, and, and look, you may be having that feeling because honestly, whether you grew up in church, you could be the older bro, OG Bobby Johnson. 
and it, or, or, or whether you didn't grow up in church. You, you can be the, you know, little youngin. Both of us, all of us in the air, are either one, or one or the other. At one point in our lives or another, we were either the, the religious ones who were trying to earn God's approval because of our good works and how good we are, make, make me, or we were the person who was outside and said, I'm going to just do me, I'm going to just do my, me. Last thing. Y'all still with me? I just gotta, I, it's so much I want to share this, but he, Jesus redefines salvation at this point. The older brother had divided the world into two people. He said that either you're a good, you know, it's the good, the good people are in the house and the bad people are out. I'm a good person, so therefore I should be. I, I just, I earned, I, should, I didn't belong to be in here. The younger brother was out. He's a bad person, so he don't belong here. The default mode of every person's heart in here is self. Justification. I, I believe that I'm a good person, therefore I should be right with God. Jesus was saying that you, at your point, at that point, if you believe that you're a good person, then you're falling into the same trap of being your own savior. You're the one trying to save yourself, like this, oh, this older brother was. He, he, I love the fact that this. He said, "All these jobs saved with you." And, and, and you never gave me a, a, a young goat. And his father said, look there, son, you've always stayed with me, uh, stayed by, by me, and everything I have is yours. I love the father. The father is dope, y'all. Because he doesn't respond in the way that, they, that he should to either son. He says, we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead uh, uh, and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he's found. But, but we never, ever see that the older brother went back in the house. Because the older brother was trying to earned his way back in by being a good person. How are you trying, how, how are you getting back in, into the house of God? How are you and I working to try to get back in right relationship with the Father? Both of us are lost. So how can we be saved? Well, Jesus says we need two things. One, you need the initiating love of the Father. The Father has went out to both sons. But also, I told y'all, we need, we, need we need a good older brother. Our hearts need to be melted and, and moved by what it costs the older brother to bring us back in. Jesus Christ is our true older brother. Is that even though we were outside of the house, Jesus Christ came and lived the life that we should we should have lived and died the death we should have died. He paid the ultimate price, an extravagant gift price for you and I to have the ability to come back and have the robe put on us. But the robe that, 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 that Jesus would, would put on us is not a robe based upon our good works, but our, the robe that he would put on us is a robe of his righteous good deeds. Scripture says that in 1 Corinthians 5, 21, it says that he, he made him who knew no sin to become sin so that uh, you and I be, might become the righteousness of God in him. That means this, is that if you place your faith and trust in Jesus, you are not saved because you're a good person. You're now saved because you play, because the righteous deeds and the good life of Christ has now been accredited to your account. That means that if you place your faith in Christ, then, then, then your right standing before God is not because of your own works or your own good deeds, but it's because of the perfect life that Christ had lived on the, uh, you know, uh, for 33 years before he died, that perfect life is now a credit to your account. So I have confidence to know that if I stand before God, guess what, y'all? I'm for sure that I'm going to heaven. 9,000% sure. I, there's not one part of me that's scared of death. I'm afraid it's going to hurt. That's about it. But, but I'm not, there's not like I hope I, I get in. No, I know for sure because I am not getting in on my own basis or my own accord or based on my own good works, but I'm getting in because of that of another. So that gives me the ability to be bold but humble. I can go in and say, yeah, for sure, I'm saved. Why? This is, why, this is the difference between the, 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 a Christian and, and a religious person. Or, uh, because the religious person will say, I'm for sure I'm going to heaven because 
they'll start listing off all the good things they did. Well, I go to church every Sunday. I, I you know, I, I get money. I don't beat up old people. I'm nice. I'm this. But the but, but the Christian will look at look, will never say that. The Christian will say they say, sir, why should you go to heaven? And as I, as, as I would pull myself together because I'm so emotional because of all the, I'm so overwhelmed by the, the love and the grace of my older brother Jesus, I can say that there's nothing that is good within me. That everything, I, I deserve one thing from God and that's death and hell because I've done nothing but sin against him and, and rebel against him in every way. But yet I am still going to heaven because I'm going to heaven on the deeds of another. I'm going to heaven based upon that of the work of Jesus and him alone. And I'm saved not because of my works, but I'm saved by grace through faith. It is nothing of my own. It is something that I'm, I'm clinging to the cross and I'm holding on to Jesus. That is the assurance the Christian have. Do you, is that you? I, just, is that you? Have you placed your faith and trust in Christ? And, and you have assurance that I am for sure going to heaven because if I die, I'm going to heaven not because of my good works or not because of my good deeds or not because I'm a good older brother, but because I place my faith in Christ. And I have an assurance because of his perfect life, because of his sacrificial death, because of his love and kindness, because he drew me to him. Because mm, I'll, I'll get emotional if I think too hard, but because he drew me into him. Are you saved because of that? Is that your assurance? And if that is not your assurance, then you have, you said, sitting on shaky ground, my friend. You have no assurance. And, you, and, and I, I challenge you to come and place your faith and trust in Jesus today. Don't leave this place thinking that, well, if I'm a good person, and my good deeds outweigh my bad, bad deeds, that's not Christianity. Can y'all imagine what that would be if we all was in here and we, and we realized that maybe I was, I was an older brother? Maybe I was a younger brother. OG Bobby Johnson or, or Lil GG or Lil Youngin, whatever. Sorry. Maybe I'm one of those too, but, but, but there's a third way that Jesus is telling us to come in. He's like, he's like the, the, the robe that you, that you need is the robe of my righteousness, of my good deeds, wrap up in that. The ring that you need that I'm putting on your finger, that, that's the ring called the Holy Spirit that he's going to plant inside of you as the assurance of his down payment that he's coming back to get you. The, the sandals on your feet is the fact that, that he's going to give you righteous good works so that you can walk in those things. Oh, he's provided it all for you. Just good. You have to come to him in faith. Are you there? This story, you got two brothers, one lost, but you had, had two brothers. One who we, we know is lost and, we, and one who thinks he's found but he's really lost. Which one are you? Or have you come, come there a third way? Have you come to place your faith in Christ? And it's very clear that you place your faith in Christ because you know that you're not saved based on your good works, but you're saved based upon your faith in Christ. And that's it. No other things, nothing else added. And it's not Jesus Plus. It's not Disney Plus, I know Disney, Disney Give Plus other stuff. No. It's Jesus plus, that's it. I mean, Jesus only, that's it. Nothing else. Have you placed your faith in Christ? If you, if you haven't, I, I encourage you all to start to take, 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 take that journey. I don't care where you are. I don't care where, how far you've been. I don't, I don't care how far you've gone. I don't care how much, how, 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 uh, how much you think you are religious and you think you say, just because you said a, a, a prayer five, five, maybe five years old don't mean nothing right now. Have you come to, you know, because you still, you still be that older brother. Because you think you're saved because of your good works. No, but have you come to know the Father? Father, we thank you for who you are. Lord, I pray today that uh, as, as we come in here, Lord, I pray that uh, if we are elder brothers, Lord, um, and we're religious, or, or we say, we say that, that, that goofy lie of I'm religious, but not spiritual. I'm spiritual, but not religious, Lord. Lord, let, let both people, the spiritual, not religious, the religious, <laughs> but, you know, people, whatever, whatever what they, they define themselves, Lord, let, let us be aware of our, our standing and how, and what we're relying on to get to, to you, Father. God, I pray today that, that uh, those in here who are lost and, and they realize that, I, that I'm the older brother, 
or whether they realize that they're, that they're the, a younger brother. Look, either one, Lord, let them both, let both of them come in and, and realize that Jesus, you are offering a new way. You are offering them true life. You, you are saying that in, in John 6, 44, that no man can come to the Father unless you draw them. The fact that they're here right now and that their hearts are pricked, and some people are feeling kind of all, you know, kind of warm inside. Lord, I pray to them today that, that, that they will know that you see them, you know them, and you hear them, and that you are calling them, and don't let them refuse or, or ignore you. But Lord, I pray today that they will come to you in faith and say, Lord, I don't understand you, I don't get this fully, but I know that I feel lost. And, if I'm lo and that if I come to you, I know that I have a father who won't run away from me, but who will run to me. And it's more, more, more importantly, I know that you're already running to me because I feel you pulling me. And Lord, I pray today that they would just respond to you in faith and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm lost. I place my faith and trust in you to, so that you bring me to the house. God, I pray for, for those of, who, uh, of, of us who are in the house, let, 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 let us have that assurance to know that we are in here not because of our good deeds, but because, of the, but because of the good deeds of you, Christ. And let us look to you as we have younger brothers and older brothers of light coming in. And let us embrace them, love them, and encourage them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Which one are you, y'all? Um, that's, that's all we got. Um, I do think this is worthwhile uh, to think through this more think through this, and again, I think it's, it's time for us to kind of like really consider who are we serving? Are you, are you the person out here saying I'm religious but not spiritual? It's a good chance that you're the older brother type. Or younger brother type. If you're that person out here saying, yeah, well, I said, you know, my grandmother was, you know, she, she, she was the pastor, my, my, my great-grandpappy was that. Well, it's a good chance that if you're relying on that, their righteousness and their good deeds, you're probably an older brother. You're probably, you're probably just a lost. Have you, placed, have you placed your relationship, faith in Jesus Christ? Have you started your personal relationship with him? Do you know him personally? As, young, as old folks were saying on the kid, did you know him? If you do, then welcome to the home. But if you don't, come in to the house because he, he's asking you to come on in. And if, and if you do know him, hey, hey, fam, hey, auntie, sorry. All right, y'all, uh, that's all I got. Who else is here? Uh, who's going after me? Amir. Uh, Amir, you got anything you want to say? All right, big dog, you got it, y'all.